Business of the Senate, number one, standing in the name of Senator Seawert, disallowance of the Social Security Administration trial error amendment determination number two, 2017. Senator Seawert. Thank you. Well, I know some people in this place will think this is Groundhog Day. Here she is again, talking about trying to disallow these awful trials. I make absolutely no apology for uh, making you all debate this disallowance. I'll continue to, while these cash, this awful legislation exists and while these trials continue. I will bring this issue back again and again and again. This, so we're clear, is to uh, disallow uh, the Social Security Administration trial area, area member determination number two for 2017. What this does is it amends the Sejuna and East Kimberley determinations to extend both of the cashless welfare card trials in the East Kimberley, um, predominantly centred on Kununurra and Wyndham, and in Sejuna. Um, it extends um, the, determination, the Sejuna determination until the 14th of March this year. This is what the determination does, and the East Kimberley determination until the 25th of April 2018. I will note that the next debate we uh, enter into after this will be the cashless welfare card bill 2017, the government's desire to continue to roll out the cashless welfare card. This instru instrument was made on the 11th, Septem 11th of September 2017 and registered on the 13th of September 2017, one day before the Sejuna and surrounding region determination was in fact due to cease. So here's a lot of these people on this card thinking, finally, we're going to get off it, and then bang, the legislative instruments um, comes uh, in and furthers the trial. As anticipated, um, the trials and their subsequent extensions, supported by both this government and the opposition, have turned out to be a rubber stamp on um, income support. Based on reports and evaluations, spruit with premature evidence, anecdotes and ideology. That's what, that's what these are based on anecdotes and ideology, because if it wasn't, the government and the opposition would have not uh, a initiated this program and b um, from the opposition supported it, because the evidence from the Northern Territory is overwhelmingly clear. Income management failed, failed, met none of its objectives. And I bet most people in this chamber have not bothered ever to go and look at that final evaluation. You can, it's a very thick report. You, if, you, if you're time poor, like we all are, go and read the conclusion. Go and read the, the key points. It'll tell you the facts uh, that you need to know. People in the trial area, in the trial area, trial areas were told that they would be subject to the card for one year only. But the government keeps sneakily extending the card through legislative instruments and the, and the opposition just keeps letting them, as does the crossbench. In fact, when they last extended the trials the last, uh, last year, participants were given just one day's notice that the trials were continuing. This is no way to treat people, particularly those that feel traumatised and disadvantaged by the card. Despite the heartbreaking, spectacular failure of the 10 years of the intervention and income management and then new income management, the government thought they'd give income management another shot. The ideology wins out again. Because, you know, maybe 10 years' worth of failure, it's just not definitive enough. And the continuing disadvantage in the Northern Territory, I don't know, it's just not definitive enough to say, actually, income management doesn't work. Quite frankly, it's mind-boggling that the government's solution to helping communities who, who do have issues with drug and alcohol addiction, gambling and, in, and in fact, uh, other major problems, is a card that quarantines 80 per cent of income support recipients to a card. Somehow this will magically solve the problems of addiction, of disadvantage and those underlying causes of, dif of disadvantage. Really and truly, if it were that simple, Really, if it was that simple, you're just bringing in a card, you quarantine people's finances, you take control of their financial uh, 
literacy. Do you think there'd be? Do you think that would? And that deals with addiction. Wouldn't that put out a whole lot of our medical professionals out of a job? Now, why didn't those medical professionals think? Oh, why don't we just bring in a card where we control people's finances, we control their lives, and that will magically fix addiction. It will magically fix the intergenerational trauma that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people feel. And as was pointed out at the close of the Gap Breakfast this morning, deal with the history of disadvantage and of dispossession that was so the uh, evidence of the impact of that ongoing. Um, through into people's lives today, all that will be magically fixed with this card. And although the government says they acknowledge that it's not, they don't think it's a silver bullet. In fact, they do. From their behaviours, it's quite obvious that they do. That this will magically fix it, and it's a belief not based on evidence. I'm growing so tired of the government just relying on anecdotal evidence. And it being presented as fact, when the facts they ignore, they ignore the facts in the Northern Territory. They ignore the facts that 49 per cent of people said their lives are made worse. And that's from a flawed survey. 49 per cent in what is genuinely acknowledged across the board that the ARIMA evaluations were flawed, and particularly the push polling so-called surveys, even in that process, so many people said it's made their lives worse. The so-called ARIMA evaluation reports rely very heavily on anecdotal evidence and are based on push-poll surveys and skewed data. And the reports simply don't stand up to scrutiny. And I can give you quite a significant stack of papers where people and respected researchers have actually gone through and looked at the ARIMA reports and been quite scathing in many cases of uh, those evaluations. We've had academics and data experts give evidence at the bill's inquiry. We're going to be talking about that um, the next, as the next item of business in this place. Um, that the reports are flawed and they express concerns regarding the research and methodology being used to validate claims that the card is working and needs to be extended and expanded. The list of concerns is long, but I'll note a few. Well-regarded academics, Dr Janet Hunt from the ANU and Professor e, uh, Eva Cox from UTS and Dr Elise Klein from the University of Melbourne have concerns regarding the research design, sampling strategy, questionnaire design, recall bias, social desirability bias, uh, rising refusal rates of those surveyed and the combination of longitudinal and intercept data amongst others. There's no baseline data was uh, used and the report's authors overlooked uh, this is the reports of uh, the author, the ARIMA reports overlooked or dismissed important data that was not favorable to the trial. East, East Kimberley and Sejuna were, were weighted equally, despite the East Kimberley having a, higher, a much higher rate of trial participants. Many survey participants deemed questions regarding changes in alcohol, drug or gambling behaviours as not applicable because they were never engaged in these behaviours in the first place. If you are a vulnerable person struggling with alcohol, drugs or gambling addictions and an authoritative figure comes and starts questioning you about your drug use, it's highly likely that you are going to, to say, oh, I've reduced my drug use or stopped using. Of course you're going to say that. It's a well-known, recognised survey risks. If I think you are going to take maybe even more money away from me, you're going to take your ki my kids away from me, I'm going to say if I'm surveyed, yes, I've reduced my drug or alcohol intake asking people if they have drunk less or are looking after their children better. What do you expect people to say? Yes, of course they're going to say, I'm drinking less. Yes, I'm looking after um, my children. The evaluation claims that public perceptions of safety uh, increased. However, researchers at the University of Western Australia have demonstrated that public perception of crime is not reliable and rarely correct. But if people say it to the researchers compiling the ARIMA reports, somehow it's fact, somehow it's correct, even though 
the research shows it's incorrect. And in fact, the same was shown for the Northern Territory intervention. There was perceptions that things were better. However, when the researchers tested that in other regions not subject, subjected to, the, to income management, they found the same levels. So in other words, it wasn't safer. They just perceived it was safer um, because of income management. It, in fact, wasn't. It comes as no surprise that the trial areas didn't see an increase in employment. And it's funny how people think that the government— it would be funny if it wasn't tragic, I should say— how the government thinks that giving people a card is magically going to find them a job. There are simply so few jobs available in, com in these communities. Where are people going to magically find these jobs? The government is using a report that they know is flawed to justify the trial expansions. Government senators come into this place and parrot the government's lines with no understanding of the issues on the ground or of the flawed ARIMA report. No, they have no understanding of the impact of the, on the card on people's lives, with one claiming that it made no difference if people were, spend, if were not spending their money on drugs or alcohol or gambling. That is simply utterly not true. I was speaking to a participant or a number of participants, in fact, on the card last week, who in fact don't drink, don't, uh, don't take drugs and don't gamble. And they said the card has had a profound impact on their ability to manage their money and gave an example of the shame felt of going into a uh, mixed, what they call a mixed um, uh, market or a store that actually it was a restaurant, in fact, and not being able to pay to eat because the venue sold alcohol, as most or a lot of venues do within the restaurant. She couldn't pay. So it's absolute nonsense to say that it makes no difference if you were doing the right thing, as the government puts, uh, puts about. Which brings me to the point that apparently if you're on income support, the right thing is you're not even allowed to buy a glass of wine. If you're on the DSP, you're not even allowed to have a glass of wine because that's the wrong thing. And here's the government and, and Senator Brandis yesterday in his valedictory speech made the point about the growing authoritarianism, authoritarianism of the left from the party that's telling people how to spend their money and wants to control their daily lives and take away financial independence, control of your own fan finances and control of your life. I found that uh, quite a significant point of interest, that we are the ones being accused of authoritarianism when they are the ones seeking to control people's lives. Mr Tudge, while um, Human Services Minister kept saying that they will only roll out the card if the community, if the community wants it. Well, it's pretty clear from the Senate inquiry that communities, some divided on the issue, some very strongly opposed. But the one thing that is universally agreed upon is that they want to be listened to and they want wraparound services and they want to be consulted. If you're on income support, they want to be consulted. A point People haven't been in the Kimberley and they haven't been in Sojourner. People have many, many problems with the card and they don't want to be on the card. Over the course of the Senate inquiry into the latest bill, we heard about the lack of consultation with people who live on the card and key community organisations. In fact, when I went to Harvey Bay, which is in the region where they're going to roll out and the government wants to roll out um, the welfare card. I held a public uh, meeting there. In fact, more people attended there than had been turning up to the consultations the government had been uh, running and inviting people to. At one of our Senate hearings, we heard from the mayor of Sojourner, who said that the consultations taking place in his town were people calling into the office. Apparently, that was the process for consultation. The people actually living on the card had not been consulted, and that is simply just not good enough. I'm very glad that we had community members from the trial areas come to Canberra to talk to the committee. Um, it's time the government listened to them. 
In November, I also tabled a petition from over 850 uh, signatures from members of the Bundaberg community who do not want their area to be another trial site. Um, and I think we need to stop using this term trial because it's quite clear the government wants to keep rolling this out. It's a trial area. You could wear the word when they said it was for a year, but they just keep rolling out in East Kimberley and they just keep rolling it out in Sojourner. Now they want to put it in other places too. People in those communities in Bundaberg don't want it in their area. And they want to see real assistance from their government to tackling issues like substance abuse. Again, people want to deal with these issues of addiction, but they recognise addiction is a health issue. People want help dealing with the issues in their communities, but they want investment in wraparound services. They want to address the underlying causes. They don't want another trial of a card that doesn't work. And of course, we all know the card overwhelmingly targets Aboriginal people. And we know it was brought in uh, in a response to creating parity, Andrew Forrest's report, and that was about creating parity for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. He wanted this card to a, for Aboriginal people. We know that there were people who moved away when they heard the trial uh, might be coming to the area. This is particularly devastating for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities and for the Aboriginal communities in remote communities. First people should not have to choose between living on country and having proper access to income support. People in remote communities need access to cash. I've heard multiple examples of why that's important. It's just common sense that with um, the banking and card facilities that um, we have in the city are just not available in rural and regional areas. And I outlined yesterday um, in my, uh, uh, the, in my uh, contribution to the uh, second reading debate on the, the rollout of the card, new rollout of the card, uh, some of the concerns that people have. Um, people simply can't survive on 20 per cent of their income in uh, cash in these communities. This, the survey data includes significant personal reports of increased hardship. And in the um, final evaluation report, the Wave 2 report, many of the surveyed participants said that they ran out of money to buy food or to pay for items for their children. Um, there's, complex there's a number of reasons why people are running out of, of cash on their card. Um, and I articulated yesterday the problems um, with forcing people to use the credit facilities and the problems with the FPOS facilities. There is simply no evidence that blanket income management um, works and it should be abandoned. Some of the other issues that people have raised with me include, for example, the community panels. The community panels where the government has consistently refused to name the people on it. Um, this form here is the form that people are supposed to fill in if they want an exemption from the 80-20 rule. You can't get off the card, um, but you can apply to this faceless community panel who may be your neighbour um, to get your, uh, the percentage quarantined reduced from, say, 80 per cent. The lowest is 50-50. Now, the person I was talking to, a um, person on DSP um, who uh, uh, does not uh, spend money on, on drugs or alcohol or gambling, um, made an application to the, to the panel in um, their region, and they, wanted, they asked for 50-50. With no explanation whatsoever, the panel just said 80-40. There's absolutely no evidence that this person like, is suffering from any addiction, that she mismanages her money, yet arbitrary decision, 60-40. And they ask questions like, um, I give my consent for the panel administrator collecting the personal information I've provided on this form. I give my, percent, my consent, this is from a West Australian for the Kununurra region, the West Australian police to provide administration in surrounding any convictions I have. The Department of Housing, the Community Housing Limited, Kununurra Hospital, Catholic Education, the Department of Education, the Department of Child Protection and Family Support, East Kimberley Job Pathways, East Kimberley um, and it says, I give my consent to the panel administrator providing my personal information received from the above authorities, the community panel. So they're going around and asking every single 
body they can think of about a, personal, a person's personal life and personal finances. It is an outrageous invasion of privacy. People don't want this card. It doesn't work. It should end. This farce should end. I urge this chamber to support this disallowance to put an end to this farce once and for all.